Love podcast, hate nonsense. It's the Politics Joe podcast, ladies and gentlemen. The one where the gang get back together again. Oh. I feel like we've not done this in ages. It's been a while. Yeah. It's been a damn long time. Mm. Missed you both. Yeah. I missed your your dual company. The triple threat. Mm. Mm. The tripod. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The triangle. Yes. The triumvirate. Mm. Triples. The trifecta. Three. I like trifecta. Yeah. The Holy Spirit. Yeah. Who's the father? It would be you, wouldn't it? Who's the ghost? J well, well, possibly Ed because yeah. of his complexion. <laughs> <laughs> and that makes you the son? Yes. Hmm. Mm. Prodigal. Is it not the... F yeah, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. That's the three, isn't it? <laughs> no, there's a fourth one. <laughs> yeah. The shadow. <laughs> <laughs> Laser beam, Nighthawk. <laughs> 2,000 years of Catholic theology couldn't be wrong about the shadow. Ed Campbell. Hello. You right? Mm -hmm. I'm good, thank you. Ava Santina. Yeah. All right? Yeah, you? Yeah. Mm, nice. Who's going to try and get Oasis tickets? Me. I told Ed earlier, I want to, I, I, I want to go anyway, but I want to go because I know it will really upset people. That you're there. Yeah. And I want to be able to, like, for the next year, quote tweet, like, people who, like, shitpost me being like, I've got Oasis tickets. If you hated me then, you'd, you'll hate me more now. Would you get, like, an Oasis haircut? She if you got, got them. Got one already, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. You wouldn't? What else could I do that would be Oasis themed? Tons of gear. Yeah. Well, I'll do that. Yeah. Okay. That would go down well. Uh, so, in summary, getting Oasis tickets to stunt on them online. Yeah. To flex. Mm hmm. I, it really was fueled by that one guy who said that imagine turning up to Oasis and Chloe from Stockport is standing in front of you um, and she's 21. All right, Dave. Like, yeah. what? What do you mean? <laughs> I saw, I saw like, Imagine if there are women there. Yeah, <laughs> that's essentially what yeah. that is. I saw another tweet that was like, "It better be people who know. It better be a proper crowd who know songs like these instead of people who just know Wonderwall." As if like the back hey, catalogue of Oasis nah, is in nah, any nah. way underground. Yeah, like it's gatekeeping. Bro. It's, yeah, it's gatekeeping the Oasis. It's <laughs> mental. <laughs> Like, what's next? Gatekeeping like the Catholic Church? Like, what do you... <laughs> I think one of my best and worst concert experiences was an Oasis gig. Ooh. It's the first time I saw anyone do pingers. Yeah? Yeah, because everyone was doing pingers. I was 15. <laughs> and it was the first time I'd been covered in piss as well. Re really? You hadn't been covered in piss yet at 15? No, no. Wow. At least... Yeah, no, I hadn't. Beyond being a baby. Is that what you... Going to say I was going to make like a, a, a sex joke about the water sports you were into as a 15 year old. Yeah, just tons of squirting. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, that's a horrible idea. But that, well, I did, that I did also opens, that opens up a really interesting debate that is squirting just piss. I'm glad that we've well, got onto the. Uh... <laughs> if there was ever a forum to have that debate, it's you with two men. Ed, your thoughts? I'm something of an expert at squirting. <laughs> Four minutes in. <laughs> in my past really experience. Really that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 100% hit room. <laughs> <laughs> that you... must be a nightmare for your laundry no, cycle. No, I've got rubber sheets. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wondered about them, right? Do they sleep in those sheets afterwards? Is it like you have your fun, <laughs> then you go to bed, but you're like squeaking when you roll over? I think they probably put on some. It's two separate things, isn't it? It's power through. Yeah. It's power through the beeping. Another exceptional like, dub for the your, studio. Your, your kink doesn't extend Honk to the rest of your. Squirting. I imagine it's quite com. com <laughs> 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 I've always thought I've done quite a good goose impression. Oh my god! Jesus! I don't know what that was. Goose. Yeah. No? I don't know. Let's hear your goose. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> See, now I'm trying to think of what a goose sounds like instead of just trying to imitate you. It sounds you. like what I just <laughs> right. did. But I'm not convinced of that. <laughs> they, they do like a, almost like a seesawing, like... <laughs> Sometimes as well. <laughs> so, so they go, <laughs> kind of. Okay, that's my goose. That. <laughs> Ava. I would actually goose sound. What's your best animal impression? <laughs> I don't. I think I've got do. a good chicken as well. Okay. <laughs> mm. that, was, that was weak. My sister does a very good goat. <laughs> okay, that's a horrible noise. And it wasn't actually that much like Ollie. That was Ollie. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's a voice note I sent Ava at 2 a.m. on Monday morning. (laughs) Have you ever done a bark off? No. And no, I don't know what a bark off is. (laughs) It's it's where you just you just do the best impression of a dog. Mm. We just had a honk off. Yeah, I suppose so. But we but none of us are familiar enough with geese Mm. to actually ascertain who was the best. I think. But dogs we're all very familiar with. What would a bark off? Why would that begin? Well, uh, sometimes you, <laughs> you slap your opponent with a glove. <laughs> well, you, sometimes you're just in a in a bar, and inspiration strikes, and you say, "Should we have a bark off?" And everyone is in, and then you have a bark off. So it's got nothing to do with squirting. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! You know my mum listens to this podcast. Some of my girlfriend's family friends uh, asked about the podcast on, yeah, cool on Friday yeah. and said uh, they were excited to listen to it. So hello to them. Oh, God, no, that makes me think about my, yeah, his family were like, oh, well, we'll listen to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. Jesus. That's, t- yeah. I was telling Ed that I met some Scottish people when I was at Fringe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Likely place for them to be. <laughs> caught, caught up with Ed after a week. Met some Scottish people over the last weekend. Thought you might be interested. <laughs> do you know them? <laughs> you started rattling off names. Yeah, it turns out we actually do all know each other. Um, go on. Oh, I don't want to continue. No, go on. They clearly really didn't like English people, and I took that on as a real task. That's novel. That's, yeah. That's... That's uh, original from those Scottish people. But I was like, this is this is my uh, this is my moment. To, oh, you championed went, the English. I went. I'm actually Italian. <laughs> <laughs> did you put on an accent? Yeah, I did. I kept talking with my hands. <laughs> Excuse me, I don't understand you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there anyone who won't be trying to get Oasis tickets? A uh, catfish in the bottle, man. Because they're playing at Spurs Stadium the same, the same day, which I think is catfish in the bottle. Meant a headlining the Spurs London. Yeah, it's the, insane. The, and you won't believe the prices. So oh, expensive. How much do you think the Oasis tickets will go on oh. for? Oh yeah, I don't know. One fifty. For probably for there's like going to be like a golden circle, isn't there? That'll be. Oh yeah. Is that where you square it? Yeah. Pardon? <laughs> is that where you square it? Why no, did we start this? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Quick question. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Is that where you squirt? Oh, it'll be like the Beatles concert. It's. <laughs> did, you, did you, you didn't hear. Did you listen to the most recent episode? No, but that makes sense to me. But you, there needs more context. Did you deliberately avoid the episode title that included Taylor Swift, knowing that it would be me and Ed talking about her to your dissatisfaction? I just thought, do you know what? Men need to just. Men need to do this. Mm-hmm. So I'll just let them get on with let it. Let them have their moment. You know? In that episode, Ed I don't make fun of you for your hobbies. <laughs> but I don't make fun like of you for Like feeding women to squirt. Like <laughs> <laughs> but in it, or lying. <laughs> Ed, Ed revealed that he believed that every woman who went to go and see the Beatles would just, res- as a result of hysteria, be reduced to pissing themselves. I think that's a misrepresentation of what I said. What was it that you said? I think I said, <laughs> not, I didn't say every woman. I said a lot, and I didn't say I believed it. I said I'd, I'd heard about it. Did your mum ever go see the Beatles? No, mum was born in the late 60s. S- scans? Yeah. Possible. So was a what, in the prime two years she could have gone? Well, well, yeah, she she's probably, most likely to piss herself. They weren't herself. playing off <laughs> <two years>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, and you believed that the saying, not a dry seat in the house... <laughs> 
came think, came from this phrase. Was that me? Is that what you, you said? said that? I'm pretty sure. Absolutely not. Because the, the saying is not a dry eye in the house, is it not? <laughs> dry seeds. I would have. I would have. I didn't even notice your eye is dry eye. <laughs> Genuinely would swear that was that was you. No. That. No. Right. This is fucking. Gaslighting it's of not, the highest it's order. Not intentional this is gaslighting. historical revisionism. Isn't it interesting? And it will not stand on this podcast. Isn't it interesting how fallible the human memory is? <laughs> God, it's fascinating. Do you know what? We don't need the human memory because there's a digital record of it. <laughs> it's quite literally <laughs> on no, the YouTube no. channel. <laughs> <laughs> Who said it, Laura? He said it. He Sam. Said it. He said it afterwards because. Oh. <laughs> He, Sam, Sam said, and Ed, they, it's like when you Sam. point two webcams at each other and their misogyny just becomes like <laughs> ultra high powered. It's like a vortex ripping apart time and space. What, what, do, you, what do you mean like when you and point two like, webcams? Women, <laughs> and, they like, and they were like, women couldn't watch the Beatles without mass hysteria and everyone having to go to emergency evacuation points because the theatre was full of piss. Flooded. It was embarrassing. They had to shut down the cabin I'm glad, club. I'm glad you weren't here to see it. <laughs> I'm glad you weren't here to see it. Um, you say that, but on Saturday afternoon, the Everton players took the uh, took a train back up to Liverpool. The Everton and, uh, players travel by train. <coughs> yeah, they did. They yeah. have a team bus. Well, yeah, they do. Yeah. But they took the train. They took the train. Yeah. Is that right? I'm surprised. Was it like ritual humiliation? Sorry, they clearly don't have the. We don't have the money that Birmingham has. <laughs> That's rude. <laughs> Birmingham's been splashing the cash. Yeah, we got lots of money actually. Yeah, you're, you're, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you know what? You know where that landed us. <laughs> 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 what could go wrong? <laughs> um, anyway, there was this man who was leaning over like the, one of the um, the barriers, and he was hysterically screaming at them like, "You paid sixty fucking grand a year," and he was. Fluorescent red spit was oh. what for a professional footballer? A week, a sorry, a week, <laughs> a week. week, sorry, a week, <laughs> 60 grand a year. So, it was yeah, actually late in Orient. Yeah, so you turn around, was like, yeah, you do pay me that much, so you get that kind of performance. Yeah. Part. <laughs> uh, it was actually just the accountant, <laughs> it was a digital marketing officer. Um, no, they probably paid the accountant a lot more, mm. seeing what happened with the figures the last time. Oh. <laughs> We won't make that mistake again. Do you think Deutsch was like, you've embarrassed yourselves, so it's the West Coast main line for all of you. The team bus, we've sent it back. Fuck you, get the train. I think it makes total sense to go on the train. <clears throat> From Euston, if you've been playing in Tottenham. But, but football doesn't make any sense. But it's eco-friendly and a lot more comfortable than travelling on a, bu a bus. I wouldn't after. I wouldn't What's the nicest bus you've ever been on? What's the nicest bus I've ever been on? Mm. Well, I'm really glad you asked, actually. There's a new electric fleet around <laughs> <laughs> the Hackney area that they've just brought in. Stagecoach has brought it in. I've always wanted to go on, like, a proper tour bus, you know. Oh, so, sorry, it can be yeah, more yeah, than public Yeah, yeah, not just transport. public transport, no. So what tour bus did you want to go on? L anyone. Like, like one always to make it. Yeah, exactly. Fridges, probably some beds. Telly. Yeah, I, I would expect at least one telly. Maybe more than one. W one each? Uh, Angela Rayner's battle bus in the general election. Oh, yeah. That looked relatively nice. The Lib Dem bus was nice. Um, one was... bus I went on when I was a teenager was a band that shall shall not be named. When I convinced... Well, I was... Yeah. Anyway. Oh, I shouldn't know. Oh, sorry. Is this, is this, are you detailing crimi age. criminal no, allegations? I was, I was of age. I was of age. Um, but I went was on... Was the, the bus nice? The bus was um, kind of disappointing because... Rubber sheets? It's actually really cool... Like that, there's like all these bunk beds and stuff, um, and a seating area in a small kitchen, right? But then when you've got like 14 people on there, not, not very space. cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean hot as well, presumably. Smelly, as well. Like I... 14 people sleeping in one. What do you mean? Room. People. God's God's aroma. God's <laughs> God the <aroma>. sweet elixir. <laughs> and there's just this like huge, just like. Wave of piss. <laughs> yeah, did a fan get on? <laughs> <laughs> Me, I was on. The oh, <laughs> have you yeah. ever? It's like when you walk into a hostel, like oh. a, a, a you know multi-person dorm, and you think, "Wow, it smells great in here." Do you think that all the time, every time? Worst bus I've ever got in mm. Brazil. Um, about seventeen hours, Oof. no stops, and an Argentinian man. Uh, took one of the worst smelling shits 
I've ever <laughs> come into contact with at the beginning of the bus ride <laughs> and the door to the toilet was broken. So for the next 17 hours, it was, the smell was so bad, we, I couldn't sleep. <laughs> so, just rocking in a state of sleep deprivation, being like, this is one of the worst experiences that's of my life. Absolutely right. And then you look out the window and the bus's wheel would be like over the edge of the cliff that's like a 200 fucking foot drop into the and sea. And you were hoping it would fall over. Yeah, so like, end To it. save yourself. That's that would be like being kicked over in a portaloo because it would presumably <laughs> land all over you. I was at a house party once. It was an 18th. And uh, a lad dropped his iPhone <coughs> down the portaloo. And despite the counsel from everyone in attendance that his phone was gone, he went in, came back out with blue past his elbow, oh. down, like, blue stained oh. it, and then held his phone up like that. I was like, I got it. Did everyone cheer? No. Everyone was like, that's fucking disgusting. Yeah, that's so fair. I remember that happening to a girl at a 16th. You have to say the it's portaloo. gone. No, 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 it wasn't a phone. The boys... The boys thought that one of the other boys was in that loo. No. And it was her in there. And then she got stuck down there. No, they kicked the, the portal over and then she came back out and she was covered in blue all over her head. I'm laughing. It was actually a deeply traumatic incident. That's really sad. Because <laughs> it was prom. Oh my God. Oh <laughs> this, no. This poor girl. <laughs> That's such a wee shame. Um, that sounded, that sounded belittling. So why? You said we. Yes, because she was a child. 16. Mm. But she was also covered, covered in wee. Yeah. Mm. That's childhood trauma. Yeah. Should we go to each um, Oasis gig? Every single one. Yeah. A million Vox Pops. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that would be... People would think it would be interesting. Was that halfway? Was that halfway to a pitch? And then you, you realised it sounded know. like a lot of work. And we're yeah. like, nah, I no, I think I'm okay. It's I don't, I don't think it would be. Though, I don't, definitely. I don't think it would. Oh, <laughs> very good. I don't think it would be a lot of work because people. It's like a positive attitude. People would be happy to talk to you. Um, I don't. What? What would we ask them? So much piss. Well, I, I would. I'd that's, bring, where, that's where that tangent came from. I'd bring. I bring through. Oh, you bring your own. I bring worthies. Have you ever been like to Vauxhall after the foot, uh, after the cricket? Um, what, at the Oval? And Yeah, and they've got like um, a urinal outside Vauxhall's tube. I don't think I have, you know. It's basically like a, a trough. <laughs> and they'll be like, honestly, after the cricket, at all times, there's about 50 men circling it, just pissing into it. It's just, but it's like a piss fountain. They have public urinals in Amsterdam, don't they? They've come out the ground. We have them here. Yeah. Someone got crushed, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Oh, that's bad. We have non coming out the ground ones, static ones. They are really grim. They, they come out the ground by Charing Cross Station. Really? Yeah. Is there a more ignominious way to die than crushed by a urinal? Crushed by, crushed by a wave of piss. Drowning. That's how John Lennon died. <laughs> didn't know he was shot. <laughs> oh, famously, he was shot. George Harrison died you believe, drowning you... piss. <laughs> Do you know what they could do to fix this massive black hole in the country's finances? What? Tax, legalise gear and tax it ahead of Oasis. I know that you haven't been on Twitter this weekend, so I'm going to let you have that. Why? Because everyone already made that joke. Oh, did they? But you haven't been on Twitter, so I'm going to let you have that. Do you know what? I was just not going to say that. Yeah? But I agree. Mm. Well done, Ed. Mm. For what? Good, ga good gag. Thank you. <laughs> Is there anyone who doesn't want Oasis tickets? Genuinely? Laura, do you know who Oasis are? <laughs> that's harsh. <laughs> that's not harsh. We've been... That's, that's a game I always play with. Don't make it look like I'm just being horrible <laughs> to Laura. <laughs> um, it's, it, yeah. It feels... Does this make start? Does it feel a bit cool, Britannia? I actually am really pleased about Catfish and the Bottleman because I think there's a... The Bottleman? I, what do you mean? Catfish and the Bottleman. What did I say? No, you said, yeah, Catfish and the Bottleman. Oh, fine. Um, I'll carry on then. Yeah, yeah. please. Yeah. Um, <laughs> their ticket pricing is astonishing. It's nuts. It's like, it's 150 quid at the front, Golden Circle. Who the fuck is paying 150 pound Golden Circle to see Catfish? What is a Golden Circle? And then it's... Well, we, we already talked about this, the squirt circle. And then, <laughs> and then for general pitch, it's 81. So less piss 
because right. you're a bit further away. It smells better. Um, and then the the stands, the they're seventy quid. I'm sorry, but I don't think that 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 is outrageous pricing. Mm. They're quite mid, aren't they? What? They're definitely not. I wouldn't say they're stadium. They are. Tour. They're like openers, maybe. Like maybe yeah. they could have opened. For I, like, Oasis. I like. I like them. I like their songs. Yeah, me too. Yeah, but. <clears throat> I wouldn't like, say, yeah, do the London Stadium. Like the Roundhouse? Yeah. Oh, yeah, easy, the Roundhouse, yeah. Oh, like, yeah, they've got Roundhouse all over them. But even the, I like, don't think Sam Fender's played a, played a venue that big in London, has he? He's doing... Um, London. He's doing what's the, the fucking park. Finsbury Park. He's doing Finsbury That's Park in the summer, Finsbury isn't he? Finsbury Park. That's huge. Yeah, he's doing that in the summer. But I think that'll be his biggest gig in London by some distance. They have that, that caption at the bottom, have like <coughs> that one album. Two. But uh, the one with the, the crocodile on it. Yeah. I like that album so yeah. much that I can't remember the name of it. But it's got like Pacifier on it and yeah. all that, hasn't it? Cocoon. It's a good one. Seven. Seven, yeah. That might be the second album, you know? Mm. Well, yeah, I mean, Christ. Oh, right. Well, so if they're charging 150 quid for, for the Squirt Circle, <laughs> um, that's surely at least 250 bish for the Oasis. Yeah, but do you think that they'll revolt? You know what I think will come after after this Ticketmaster tomfoolery, but which will bound to hap be happening on Saturday, yeah. is that it is some kind of select committee that examines bots that are buying tickets and then mm. reselling them. Scalping. So, yeah, scalping. Because you could deal with scalpers when they had to go on manually. So they were kind mm. of like in, within the same chance as you lot, yeah. as the normie, normies. But now they've got bot farms. Normies. But normies could just buy them as well. Huh? You could you can just play the scalpers at your own at the own game. No, no, but now that they've got bots. But you can you can get a bot. You, you can, can you can you can hire a bot to buy you tickets. You, you can like like people who used to buy like super, you remember Supreme Clothes were like massively Yes. Like so so hype. You could, if you really wanted a box logo hoodie, you could of your own volition buy a bot. You just have to be willing to stump up the cash. And be kind of I suppose a bit tech savvy. To how to do it obviously you shouldn't have to do that it, it's not it's not fair how do you fix it how do you fix it yeah it needs to be like the glastonbury system face on the ticket yeah because i know that you can sell that to someone else be you know but you can't but you have to be really sneaky even that's not because people are now like hacking into the glastonbury system and getting tickets for their friends we uh i know several people have done that that's how we got the tickets yeah. someone hacked in and got it you hacked. Paid for it still. Yeah, Paid for it. But you hacked it. Yeah, it's like. It's Use once, a VPN. It's, I don't know enough about coding to say this in like <laughs> <laughs> any kind of explainable way. But you run some script. Right. And once you're in, you're just in several times. And so one person just buys batches of six. Mm. Or for their friends. You have to be careful with it though. You can't go wild. Because oh, you can really? get caught. Yeah. Mm. You, could, you, you have to kind of stop at about 15. Is that where you stopped? I don't know. I didn't do it. And I didn't even go. So I just I just paid for nothing. <laughs> if you remember. For the privilege. I just paid to you, be able to tell people. You donated to Glastonbury. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I actually donate to the arts. <laughs> <laughs> donated to the, the poor people of, of Somerset. A, you got a lovely certificate. Um, I'm hi. I'm Michael, and this is my daughter Emily. We are the Evises. We are so grateful for your two hundred and fifty pound donation. Farmers are facing tough times at the moment. Hmm. Hey, didn't some news come out about Stonehenge a couple of weeks ago? Oh, the capstones from Scotland. Yeah. 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 I think we talked about that. Did you? I think so. Um, which is mad because you lot didn't get motorways until what? When? Last year. Yeah. <laughs> It's way after Stonehenge was there. That's true. Yeah. Is is culture dead? <laughs> <laughs> um, is it a good what thing? What do you mean? <laughs> is it a good thing that the biggest cultural moment now is the reunion of a band from the 90s? We just had Brat Summer, Ed. Yeah, because it's not. It's, it was the era's tour, wasn't it? That was the big cultural moment. And that has its own problems tied up in it, don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. No, culture's not. All the squirting. <laughs> <laughs> can, can, uh, 
half an hour in, I'd say. <laughs> so we've got to do the Starmer speech. Will we will be squirting gags for that? Probably. I don't know. Is that is that how there's you react when you <laughs> sit front row circle, at a Starmer speech? I call him pissy care. And there was a golden circle in the Rose Garden. Full of <laughs> NHS key workers. <laughs> 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 you have the privilege to be squirted on by Keir Starmer. Oh my god. This is ridiculous. Let's stop this right now. Yeah. Well, I just tried. Okay. No, but I... that's the one thing. Uh, no, no, no. I don't think the culture's dead, Ed. I also think it's dead. But people are being quite angry about it. People are saying this is the Deadpool and Wolverine of, of bands. I don't know what that means. Well, yeah. You know, okay, I guess you make the argument right. No one. No one's prepared to make a movie anymore uh, that's not a sort of franchise Marvel DC thing, which I think is slightly reductive. Um, also just not true. We've got films coming out our ears. <laughs> <laughs> too many films. <laughs> yeah, too, too many films. Um, I'm like... I'm off. I actually I find the influx of emails from the Barbican about new films really overwhelming. Actually, are you okay? <laughs> I wish I hadn't told people that I go to the Barbican to watch films. That's really. Um, Where is a cool place to go and watch films? Uh, Home alone, Netflix. No, no, Mubi. That's what they're all doing, isn't it? BFI. BFI. Oh. God. That feels pretentious. We should, yeah, Sam would know. Sam's got um, a season ticket to a cinema. Yeah, Sam sees films. That's a, that's a thing. Yeah, yeah, no, he really does. Sam sees films all the time. Yeah, yeah. He goes like two, three times a week. Hopefully not too much of the time. I hope he's still doing his work. <laughs> well, yeah, we didn't... We didn't. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I hope his two hours of leisure in the evening doesn't eat into his... <laughs> it's nine to five. It's really funny that, like, after a long day of video editing, he wants to go and see something edited. You know what I need now? <laughs> More video. <Yeah. laughs> uh, <laughs> videographer screen. needs big video now. <laughs> oh, long day at little screen. <laughs> now, Time for big, big screen. screen. <laughs> No headphones. <laughs> so. <laughs> my it's friend. Enough to make a videographer squirt. My um. Well, it's funny you say that because that actually does fall in line with what I'm about to say. Oh, no. So my friend, well, he's now our friend. He's my best friend's boyfriend, but he's been around us long enough now. Mm. He's been and he's only just become a friend. He's been around us a decade, so he's just he's just recently <laughs> Fucking made the poor cut. Bloke. Uh, uh, anyway, um, he's a sound. He does like he adds sound effects into film and TV shows, so he's got this like huge bank of sounds, and he also adds to it quite a lot. Mm. And um, you'd be surprised like where he gets certain sounds from. Like he had his girlfriend eating a grapefruit the other day. What did he use that for? Um, it's, I can't think of a polite way to say it. <laughs> say it in the most crass way imaginable. <laughs> Like a, like t t a woman eating another woman out. <laughs> <laughs> I've never really thought about the uh, like the architecture of the sound design in a scene like that. Sorry. So does he get like an email from the director being like juicier? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mash it up more. I only heard about it because she message the group chat to be like this is me eating a grapefruit no it's be like he's really pissing me off he's making me eat like 40 different grapefruits <laughs> <laughs> with like an array of microphones pointed at her <laughs> yeah i remember seeing i think I, I, it feels like a one show segment but it wouldn't have been the one show because it was older than that maybe blue peter where i think they were in they're in the sound design <laughs> studio for the archers mm -hmm. and it was like how you make the sound of someone walking through snow and he had a tray of custard powder mm. and two wellies and he put his hands in them and was like <laughs> <laughs> that's quite fun yeah. that'd be quite creatively fulfilling do they not just have a bank no he does have a huge bank but sometimes you want to add to the bank yeah i suppose that's quite that's quite a new sound for tv and film if there's a, there's we don't a... have enough 
lesbian sound effects. He uses the toilet flush from our house in second year of uni. Mm -hmm. That still gets regular rolling out because it was a really... As a toilet flush? Yeah. Or like squirting? It was... What? (laughs) (laughs) This is fucking ridiculous. (laughs) Even by our own standards. No, no, no. As a toilet flush. Oh. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, it was a really quintessential toilet flush sound, <laughs> apparently. Do an impression? I could probably I could probably get up at one of the films for our next podcast and I, I can show it to you. And you can go, that's Ava's second year toilet flush. Toilet flush. That might be poo for op sake. What did you, <laughs> fucking God. What did you say? <laughs> that might be poo for op sake. That might be what? Poor for operational security. He's saying that... What, what, I still what, don't know what that means. Yeah, so what Eddie's saying is that you might not want to share that sound because from the sound, someone may be able to identify where you lived in second year at university. That is, that is the premise. That's what he's just said. Why would that matter to me now? Wonderful it, question, Abel. Why was, would that matter? It was a joke. <laughs> it was a joke. Oh, my God. Are there bugs in here? I feel like I've been bitten suddenly, like, quite a bit. No, I don't feel that way. No. Um, shall we do the Starmer stuff? I'd love to do that. Mm-hmm. Would you like to do the Starmer stuff? I would have liked to have started on the Starmer stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And because we're a three, yeah. we can do the thing where Ava sets it up. Yes. It's been ages since we've done that. No, that's true. Ava, what did Keir Starmer say today? Starmer in the Downing Street Rose Garden. I love this. Famous, you might remember it, from uh, Dominic Cummings in the Rose Garden. Would we say that the rot started in the Rose Garden? The ro- I didn't see very many roses today, did you? Well, in which case, then the rot has set in. Yeah. <laughs> it must be that new peroxide or whatever it is that um, Gove makes people, farmers spray on their crops now. The farmers who, who take care of the, the farmers in Downing Street. The farmers are all compa- complaining about the certain... Moving on. Starmer today said that the budget that is coming this October will be very painful. There's mm. going to be difficult trade-offs. There's going to be big asks of the entire country. However, those with the broadest shoulders will be asked to bear the largest burden. And it's also not Labour's fault... Uh, They've inherited a £22 million black hole. They said that they'd never anticipated such a big black hole, but which is odd because the IFS actually did, did say during the election that it would be between 10 to £20 billion mm. black hole. Yep. Um, and the Conservatives are pointing out that they've actually got a recovering economy, so they shouldn't be as upset as they are. <laughs> do, do you, do you, I quite like Grindset Starmer. <laughs> where, he, where, he, where he's like... Yeah, but you can't where he's, on where he's like, bro, he's like, bro, God sends his heaviest burdens to his strongest soldiers, bro. Yep. Carry the load, bro. Mm-hmm. Who's going to carry the boats and the logs? Billionaires. <laughs> Psych. non It's the pensioners. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, I, I haven't really been paying much attention to news because I've been off for pretty much a month. A couple of weeks. Yeah, you have. Um, legally, sorry, I was entitled to that time. I'm trying to excuse it because I, I was liked, actually quite shocked myself at I, how long I'd had off. I, I liked it. I thought it was a novel approach mm. um, as opposed to Ed Campbell's, which was take your holiday during the general election yeah, yeah, campaign. Yeah. Mm. I felt I should be rewarded for not going to Glastonbury. It all came good in the end. <laughs> you could have gone to Glastonbury. Anyway, OK, so um, I thought one thing that was quite interesting was the Joseph Rowntree Foundation during the election was estimating that there would be £20 billion in spending cuts per year. Mm. Both parties' manifestos indicated that because they weren't going to spend any more and factory said, inflation. There was a conspiracy of silence. They did say that. And what's interesting is that that is enough to cover the quote-unquote £22 billion black hole. Mm. So it's almost like, um, well, this is exactly what was predicted is now coming true. Do you think we can file this under dishonest Keir Starmer? I... I think it's really tricky because I think that they were very careful with their wording. So, for example, um, when they were talking about tax rises, how there would be no tax rises on working people, right? No new tax rises for working people, I think, was the phrase. Yes, that's the exact... Yes. Um, 
that will probably still ring true because it's a technicality. So they're going to go after carried interest and they're going to go after capital gains, right? So they can make an argument that that is not money that has been earned through physical working. It's not been earned P-A-Y-E, right? Working people can still pay capital gains, can't they? Absolutely. But I'm saying I think that they could skirt around it on a technicality. Still pay fuel duty? Yeah, but are they putting up fuel duty? Could do. They'll probably have to put up the... um they the, should. There's been a, a slight relief, hasn't there, on beer and spirits. They'll probably have to get rid of that. I think... Working people will probably pay that. Keir Starmer likes to win elections. Well, yeah. And I think he says what he thinks he needs to say to win the elections. And then once he's in power, he doesn't really care about the promises he makes or feels beholden to them. And he's like, right, I'm now where I want to be so I can actually get on with the business of governing. Because, Ava, as you quite rightly said, the fucking world and his dog was talking about the gap in the public finances before the election. The IFS, Joseph Roundtree Foundation, um, Rishi Sunak, not that anyone wanted to listen to him, but he was telling everyone Everyone, the Labour Party is going to put up your taxes. Not anyone listened. You it's not. It's disingenuous at best, if not an outright lie, to say. And I accept some of. I think there is some spending uh, commitments which we didn't really know about on immigration. I think it's about six and a half billion, which is not to be sniffed at. But the OBR publishes twice a year, right? S state uh, sort of the the household accounts, for want of a better analogy. Rachel Reeve said so herself to the Financial Times in June. It's not good enough to say, well, 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 look what we have here. We've come in, it's a mess. It's a mess, and we've got to do something about it. We've got to do something about it. I'm afraid we, our hands are tied at this point. It's just, it's, 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 it's dishonest. It's completely dishonest. I don't agree with you. Why? I actually think that they have been uh, truthful the entire time. And I think you had to have your eyes shut to um, think anything different, I'm afraid. What do you mean by that? Well, I don't, I think, you know, throughout the election, he told us that there was going to be difficult choices and this was not 97. And I think that, you know, as, as we've already agreed, um, we knew that there were going to be public spending cuts. And he said that. I think that a lot of the public just didn't want to hear it. Yeah, he promised nothing and is delivering nothing. Yeah, I, I think that he is. I, I think that he's done exactly what he said he would do. But during the election campaign, no one wanted to listen to it. I think. I think. I think your point about being dishonest and disingenuous about the twenty billion spending cuts or the twenty billion hole. He was dishonest about that, but he's maintained that he's going to do nothing, and now he's going to do nothing about a big problem. Is it nothing? I mean, it's... Sorry, it's, give, give nothing is what I should right. say rather than do nothing. Because it's going to be either cuts, tax rises or borrowing. And because they're adhering to the Tory fiscal rules, it's not going to be borrowing. And there's not much left to cut. Mm -hmm. um, well, they found it in the winter field, didn't they? <clears throat> I thought that... Do you know what? I This is what I was going to say. I wasn't really paying attention to the news. And... I, I'd, I'd seen overview that winter fuel um, allowance would be cut. I didn't realise that it would be um, only available now to people who are on pension credit or other benefits. That's £12,000 a year. Mm. It's under that. It's like £11,500 a year. Yeah. If you're getting £12,000 in pension credit and you don't have an asset that you can start, you know, I don't know relieving equity in or whatever, what the hell do you do? Yeah, pension of poverty is a real thing. And Ofgem have announced that household bills will go up £150 um, from October. Why aren't we, you know, the French at least alleviated a lot of the quote-unquote Ukraine pain, right? Because they, they, the government took on the, the burden from the energy companies. I don't understand how you can allow Ofgem to push up the price cap and take away the winter fuel allowance. I'm quite shocked. Yeah, it's quite heartless. Um... What I thought was interesting was the rhetorical trick he used as the di diagnosing the country as it is broken, it is unbelievably broken. And everyone goes, yes, yes, it is unbelievably broken. And forcing people 
if they agree with that, you saw some commentators almost defending his actions because they agree with his diagnosis. It's, he, he's 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 was almost suggesting that I'm the only I'm right about what we can do about this, and if you disagree with what my what my tactics to fix this is, you are being you you are just being oppositional for opposition's sake. You're on the side of the Tories, and you think the country's good. I think some people will fall for that. It's very much like the note that was left to, to uh, Cameron and Osborne that there's no money left in the Treasury, right? They're making that same claim. Yeah, it's a classic trick, isn't it? Uh, every incoming government does it, right? The last government left things in such an irreparable mess, and unfortunately, we're going to have to. Here comes the t- here comes the medicine. I'm going to have to. That you're going to have to administer to you. What did you think of them tying the riots to this as well? Diagnosing a fundamentally broken country. Uh, yes and no. Um, I think that I think it's part of it. I think the destruction of um, the social fabric, the the sort of um, attack on community and and you know loss of third spaces and mutual aid or the, well, I guess the increase in mutual aid as a result of the sort of the failure of the state to fulfill some of its what I would say were duties I think that's part of the picture um, but it, it, it then kind of begs the question all right so why, why are you further cutting yeah. the already we already have one of the sort of the, the most stringent and harsh pension settlements in in Europe um, so what's what's the thinking behind that um, yeah, it doesn't make any sense as well when you think about where Streeting's plan for prevention in the NHS, right? So he wanted to try and get people treated at home or <clears throat> treated at their GP or have preventative um, treatment, whatever. If you're going to turn, pe- if people can't afford to put their heating on, then obviously they're probably going to turn up at an A and E, and then they'll end up bed blocking. That feels quite counterproductive to me. Mm. Yeah, I think I think the sort of banal. Uh, technocracy, managerialism. I think it lead. It, I think it leads you to this place. I think. I think Starmer has capitalised on the politics of apathy. Um, historically low turnout in the last general election. Um, has presented himself as the adult back in the room, and without a positive vision for the country. If you play to people's um, baser instincts, as he ha- as he has done on things like immigration. Um, you don't just get to say, you know, it's 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 austerity that's that's done that, that's led to these riots. Um, I think he has a hand to a hand to play in it as well. So, yes and no. What do you think? I think it's interesting suggesting that the last fourteen years of government have been some way played any some played some way played away in the riots we saw, and then doing the same thing, thinking Osborne was right. Let's do that again, and I'm sure the country will somehow be strong enough to survive it. Unless it'd be so different if he's been like, we're going to have, yeah, really shit, horrible budget for a year, and then massive growth. If it's, it's, he talks about growth in the abstract, not what he's going to do with that growth, what's, what that will achieve for the country. I think it'd be much easier to buy in for people if everyone was like... Because he, t- he talks to people as if it's like a team effort. He talks to the public as if it's going to be tough for all of us. I don't think he quite realises how tough it will be for people whose services are cut even further. I think the interesting thing, and I may have made this point before, talking about rhetoric, is the gap between, I think I may have said it on the podcast before, after that Reeves speech before recess, the gap between what they say they're doing and then what they do. So when she speaks to Parliament, she announces the cuts to winter fuel payment mm-hmm. and says, you know, we're going to have to make tough choices and invokes the language of... Uh, austerity and invokes the language of Osborne and Cameron but at the same day she delivers a multi-billion pound pay rise to public sector workers barely mentions it at the dispatch box Mm. and there is and I I think it's maybe I wouldn't say fascinating but an interesting example of kind of media management and playing politics that I actually think the actions of the government are on what we should judge them, not necessarily the rhetoric that they're deploying, 
the media management strategy that they're employing, the, the political game playing that they're deploying around it. Um, because I guess one way of interpreting that is you've delivered like a ginormous public sector pay rise, but at the same time you're saying to the Express and the Mail, well, are you going to do a front page about this public sector pay rise and you know how terrible it is that the nurses are getting paid out, or are you going to do a front page about the fact that I'm cutting winter fuel payment, like make a decision? Right. Um, which is, I think, quite interesting. Mm -hmm. That is interesting. I don't think... Well, I haven't heard you say that before. I don't... <laughs> she was sat... I don't know if she was maybe funny if I, She was sat next to me the last time I said it. was. I've never heard you say that before. <laughs> <laughs> I just wasn't listening. Someone yeah. will find the clip. No, I think it was a while ago. Um, the black hole, also, I think... I wonder if they have... Um, they had a real opportunity there to estimate it well i thought they potentially they've underestimated it right mm. because they haven't factored in the 10 billion pounds well ish they're gonna have to pay the horizon scandal victims the blood infection uh scandal yeah. that's like 10 another 10 billion pounds the prisons which are all falling apart which is going to cost billions you know i think they could have really ramped up the black hole rhetoric because if you say 22 billion pound black hole now and then later you go oh hang on a minute Actually, we keep finding black holes. Yeah, yeah. it's actually 50. Yeah. We're going to go, listen, pal, you got some holes in that bucket. Yeah. It just makes me so angry and embittered about Osborne and Cameron and Clegg. You know, because of quantitative easing, because of interest rates that were without historical precedent, they basically had a once, more than a lifetime, once in history opportunity to borrow extensively and borrow to invest and do things like build more prisons, possibly build a reservoir, invest in pandemic preparedness. These are all ideas. Mm -hmm. These are all possibilities. And now we're sort of stuck in this, like having a hypoglycemic meltdown where we're, we're sort of calcified into a sense of permanent weakness where we can't move or do anything because of fiscal constraint, a high tax burden, anemic growth, stagflation. And it just makes you think, why the fuck didn't they do something? Well, obviously, ideology, politics. But it seems like a once in a generation opportunity that they just sort of passed up on. And, and they set the tone for the discussion of economic policy since. But also set the tone for short termism, right? Mm, yeah. There's no, there's no ambition. Set, set the tone for sticking plaster politics, one might say. You could say that, couldn't you? You could. I wouldn't. Big old black I've hole. I've never heard anyone say the phrase sticking plaster apart from Kiss Armour. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're just plastered. I've just never really thought about that. Do you see a band aid? Band aid or a plaster? Did you yeah. say band aid? Yeah. Why? What would you call it? A plaster. Plaster, yeah. yeah. I think because the brand is band aid, isn't it? Only in America, I think. Well, I buy all my medical supplies <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> across the Atlantic. You come in fully loaded with a suitcase full of Band-Aids <laughs> and some grape juice. I actually get um, melatonin in the States. Yeah. That slaps. You shouldn't be on that all the time, fella. I'm not. Mm. I'm not. Only when I can't sleep. And even then it's... Which is daily. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which since had Why a baby. Why can't you sleep? Um, you know, sometimes when your nose is so blocked, like because you got a cold, that you can't fall asleep, mm. like your nose is constantly running. Oh, bang a couple of gummies, and just it's, it sparks you out. Yeah, you got a sinus problem, have you? Sometimes. I quite like the idea that your approach to parenting is to just take. Yeah, there's just this fucking noise. <laughs> 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 just bang a couple of melatonins. <laughs> Oh my God. Um, no problem. I've thought about it before. Wake L up in the morning. You look tired, darling. <laughs> <laughs> I've thought about it before LBC, but I'm terrified because I, I don't know if you've ever taken it, but you no. are you're groggy as hell when you wake yeah. up. Like you are. Oof. It's because you've manufactured. The, uh, it's the hormone, right, that makes you go to sleep. You also have an excess of it, so waking up is a bit of a slog. Um. And I'm terrified that if, let's say at 6 p.m. on a Friday evening, I wanted to fall asleep, that I would take it and just fucking sleep through the night. So it has to be, has to be managed. You get up at one, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's too tight. It's too tight of a turnaround, that. Yeah. So melatonin and, and goods from Trader Joe's. Oh, God, yeah. It's generally what I get. I, um, 
Yeah, Trader Joe's is really good fun, isn't it? They, they have some kind of chocolatey, pretzely cluster thing that I will just... I think it has like Doritos in it as well. Ooh. Flavorless Doritos wow. covered in chocolate. I'll fucking smash I a bag of that. I wonder if you've got any American listeners. But then the we, thing do. Like, we do. Uh, do we? The email does, remember. Can we get that? The Post us Trader Joe's I met, I met one in the basket. I would really like famously. the buffalo fake chicken. I like that a lot. I love buffalo chicken. Yeah, but it's That's fake best, chicken. But it's the best thing about America, I think. What, buffalo chicken? Yeah, yeah and also I like blue cheese on things. That doesn't I love blue cheese. cheese. Blue cheese is good. Can't have that around Sean, obviously. Favourite cheese? Ooh. Yeah, probably really like awful veiny blue cheese. Stinky boy. Stinky bishop. Stinking bishop. Mm. That's a goodie. Yeah, like a really stinky but quite like, but like not a so it would go soft if you left it out, you know what I mean? A creamy, smelly cheese. You should always serve cheese at room temperature. It should be melting. I don't know about that though, because... You ever had Baron by God? No, what's that? It's an English one, it's kind of like that, it's not that stinky. Mm. But it's delicious. Yeah? Yeah, strong recommend. Where'd you buy that? Wanky shops. Right. Yeah. yeah, cheese there's, dealers. There's a really cunty cheese dealer in De Beauvoir that I've been meaning to no, go to. No, really? <laughs> Do you mean that in the yeah. no positive sense? Huh? Do you, like, you know when people are, are like, wow, that dress is cunty. Do you mean like that? Or no, no, as like, in like it's just... For yeah. panties. It looks... I, I think if I bought some cheese there, it would probably be like the size of my palm and it would be like 40 quid. Sick. But... Listeners won't know the size of my palm is actually. <laughs> <laughs> she has massive hands. The size of this table. <laughs> yeah. It's actually a very good deal. I've never looked at either of your hands before. Those are quite substantial hands. Yeah. Serious mitts. You've got some calluses on there, haven't you? Oh, all I you, do is... Yeah, you're outdoing me. All I do is work, Ava. You can't see, but there was a good... Yeah. I'm so petite. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so small. And Laura comes on here and makes me look like the fucking Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> Someone replied on the... I'll never, ever get over that person who replied on the live chat saying, Jesus Christ, Ava, careful where you're waving them. <laughs> oh, my hands. <laughs> Hell. You might knock Laura out. That is actually what they said. They're about two feet wide, to be fair. Huh? They're about two feet wide. Yeah. <laughs> Some serious mitts. Um, do we cover all of that? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, do we want to do coverage of Notting Hill's racist? I mean, case closed, really, isn't it? Yeah. There was a Notting Hill racist. Peter Basie, you know, oh, I got the press releases from the Met. X number of arrests, so many stabbings, blah, blah, blah. And then people, you know, saying, why do we allow this to happen? Despite, it, you know, having about a million people there, most of whom are there peacefully, and they're just there to, to catch a wine and drink a magnum. I think it's quite a good argument for, like, a police state, because... Um, <laughs> shut it down! <laughs> whenever there is any violence, we should just completely shut it down. So, like, we should shut down, like, you know, if the, if someone shoplifts, shut that supermarket down, because it's too dangerous to be open. <laughs> um, any incident on a train? Well, there's trains. no more trains now, oh. fellas. <laughs> yeah, no, you're still right. <laughs> Looks like you're walking. In, like, a school. Any car accidents? Well, that's it. We're shutting uh, Thatcher's motorways. <laughs> I'm going to weigh you. So um, me committing like petty crime at Villa Park to like close the whole thing down. <laughs> I actually didn't sure go on. Um, I'm sure there is petty crime being committed at Villa Park. <laughs> to be fair. I actually didn't go on Twitter crime. on Saturday for the whole day because I, I just saw one tweet that annoyed me so much, and it annoyed me because it was some. It was a lot of people. The Met, Westminster Police replied, being like, put a tweet out, being like, there'll be no. Um, we'll be patrolling Westminster. Da -da. And there are all these people replying, being like, yeah, doing fuck all about Notting Hill Carnival then. And there was like reams and reams of tweets like that. And then I was just like smashing my head against the wall. Like all they had to do was Google where is Westminster Borough and they would see that it goes right up to fucking Notting Hill Carnival. <laughs> so it was a logistical thing that annoyed me. Mm. The promotion of idiots on Twitter who know nothing. Thank you. It's been a while since I went to Carnival. I'm going to go back. I do actually. Oh, you should. It's great. Yeah, no, I've just, I know it should go. It's good fun. Good fun. I haven't been since I was a teenager. 
Or he wants to, wants to go and catch a wine. Yeah. Yeah? Just vicariously, just sort of reliving my youth. Family day is quite fun. Yeah, that's a real symbol of my age, isn't it? Oh, I'll go to family day at Notting Hill Carnival when there are no stabbings and no wines. But good food. <laughs> yeah. Darling, will you hold her? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's called daggering love. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's enough of that, I think. Okay. Happy? Yeah. Closing remarks? Let us know if you want to take me to Oasis. Are you open to invitations? Yeah, yeah, I might be. Would you go in the golden circle if someone was paying you? Yeah. I assume it's not a piss thing. I no, if a, it was a piss thing. I assume it's a misnomer. They should call it the VIP area. <laughs> because people will get confused. Very important P. pissing. V oh, shit. Mm. No, just piss. Just piss? <laughs> the platinum area. And then there's absolutely zero issues there yeah the platinum square you like your piss non-platinum what do you like it a bit dehydrated clear you, hopefully yeah yeah transparent how hydrated are you like do you think if you piss now it would be clear uh, i've not drank enough water today i would say so oh, that's not gonna help is it no but i would have a diet coke i do drink quite a lot of water though not enough well, that today is is not representative of my usual water intake. It must be said. How many times have you been for a pee today? Mm. Maybe twice. That's too low. All day you've been to to piss. Oh, twice. sorry, I mean since work. Mm. Maybe three. <laughs> three all day. It's not good enough. Is it not? Those are rookie numbers. How many times should I be pissing? If you've got three kidneys, I'd say at least twenty. <laughs> I'm a piss machine. <laughs> Who's got? Have you got three kidneys? Do you yeah, know she yeah, three yeah, kidneys, yeah. bro. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> what does that mean? He doesn't trust you. I've, you know, I've, like, look at you suspiciously. Yeah. Like. I've unlocked. I've unlocked a new uh, bigotry Kink? in my head. <laughs> 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 I, did, I didn't know. <laughs> An anti kidney prejudice. <laughs> I didn't know it was disc discriminatory against that. Yeah. Someone emailed me to tell me how selfish I was once for having three kidneys. A boy went to school with had four. four. Oh fuck off! That's but no ridiculous. bullshit. But they were four small ones. Like they weren't. None of them were like good enough. So we had four weak kids. Yeah, 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 they were bad. Yeah? We were like, oh, you're hogging them. He was like, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm not. I was like one good one instead of my four shit ones. That's like, would you buy four single pints of milk or just a four pinter? Four pinter, presumably. Did anyone at, work, um, at school ever tell you that they had three nipples? <laughs> No. Mm. Uh, there was a boy who had three nipples. Oh, he actually did. Like a, it's not yeah. like a birthmark thing. Uh, he had a third nipple. Was it a normal nipple? Uh, I didn't look at it that that intimately. But it was nipple. It wasn't a skin tag or something. I actually don't know. It maybe 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 it was. I didn't spend a lot of time with it. Where was it? It was like about here. Still on the chest, listeners. But to be fair, he got teased for it rather than showing off for it. So. I don't think there's a world, that, I don't think there's a school in existence where you could have a third nipple on your hip and you wouldn't be mercilessly. Yeah, children are cruel. Really? Is there a world where people are like, <laughs> radical. Nice one. Love your third nip, do you brother. Know, have you got, do you guys get teachers doing like TikToks on your TikTok for you page? American teachers. I get British again. ones. Do you? And like, I'm not even, like the thought of a teacher making content about like, Teaching lessons in front of all of your children, and you're like, What the fuck? You've That's got so many children. <laughs> I'm taking my eight, 12, 15 year old. If, if, if either of their teachers, any of their teachers, are making content, I think it's you're pulling them out of school immediately. I think it's quite a strange thing to do. TBH, do Make, you making content in the classroom? Yeah, they should do it the good old fashioned way and just be like you guys, two men in front of a microphone in a dark studio with a green screen. Well, yeah, because it's our job. And there's, and there's, we're not like we don't have a duty of the care. The state to, doesn't pay you to make TikToks. <laughs> we don't have a duty of care to anybody. Oh, that that's your issue. Is that Actually, it's yeah. public sector money? It's an no, I, I, right. I, I, we all I think, have to tighten our belts over. The teachers have to stop TikTok. Sorry, this is my issue. Stop this is my issue. Shaming me. I think my issue is I think it's cringe. That's what I think it is. Really. More what than do you anything. think is cringe? Like teachers teaching. making teaching. Teachers making TikToks think, about teaching. You think the public sector is cringe? No, I didn't say that. Right. No, that's what I heard. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Well. Like again, good thing we have a, both audio and video <laughs> of what I said. Yeah, which is that 
you would piss over any teacher <laughs> that made content, <laughs> even in their own time. If it was in the Platinum Square, yeah. Good for you. They're, I can send you something bad. I'm fine. You sure? Yeah. What, what were you going to send us? Bad, bad, bad teacher, teacher TikToks. TikToks. <laughs> I think that's more for you. <laughs> no, it's not. I don't like. I, I don't. I don't like them. No. No. That's the whole point. We're not fucking listening. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Will we wrap this up. Yes. If <laughs> <laughs> just winked at me. Should we call it? I feel like. <laughs> I feel like we need to call it. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye bye.